Because you were talking, I think I'm, I'm just doing the context myself, but uh, sure. <laughs> because you were, I, I, I think this question is asked because you were talking about credentials. Richard, what are your credentials? It's asked by yeah, Brainstorm 5556. I mean, five, five, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and uh, I would say you should always be asking that question, uh, especially if someone's ever given you a stock pick. I think that's an important one is, is what are their credentials? Um, so my credentials are kind of the, the two important ones, I guess, would be a chartered financial analyst designation. So CFA, it's it's kind of the, it's really the only, I, I want, don't want to call it gold standard because it's kind of two to my own horn, but uh, it's one of the only kind of broad-based accreditations out there in the world of finance that's globally recognized. Uh, there are a few others, but that's kind of the, the broadest one, if you will. I also have my certified financial planner uh, designation, which is a bit more generalist, touches on things like insurance, taxes, and things like that. So even though I focus on investing, I did take that because, uh, you know, when you have a client, an investment client, they sometimes bring up questions about insurance and stuff. So that's more of a, a generalist uh, one. But outside that, uh, bachelor's in finance and not an education credential, but as I mentioned, uh, fully, uh, I see questions, yes, the CFA is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and um, experience, right, as an, uh, as an analyst. Yeah. So I, I've been working in finance in the industry. I graduated in 2015, I believe. So since then, I've been working in the industry as an analyst for seven or eight years. And more recently, fully registered over the past two years as a portfolio manager, which in Canada anyway, I'm not fully sure how the registration works in different countries. But in Canada, it's one of the highest levels of, of registration you can get on the advisor side is to be a fully registered portfolio manager. It basically just means that if I took on a client, I could buy them any type of position on a discretionary basis, meaning that you could just put money into an account and I can do all the work for you. There are different levels where you have to call the person and they have to confirm every time you buy. So those are the, and it's different in the US. I think, again, not to toot my own horn, I think it is easier in the US. I think after the mm -hmm. Series 7, a lot of people can get to that same position. But th so those are my, those are my, Oh, that's interesting. So, so when I, when I finally uh, have some money that that I I have to to invest rather than in my own YouTube channel or my house, uh, I should look for a Canadian uh, advisor, <laughs> not a US based sure. one. I I, yeah, I don't want to crap talk the the US system. Well, this you, you just on... did a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my perception of it. I don't know a whole lot about the process. I just know that it was a. It was a pain to get my registration. And mind you, there are different routes. I believe in Canada, even you can take the CFA. I believe there is another route through maybe the CIM designation, uh, which I believe is a Canadian one. But all to say that, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, with anyone, there's more to it than just their credentials. You know, I think it is important to find someone that, you know, aligns with your values. You know, if you find someone who's out there buying tech stocks and stuff, they might be fully accredited and everything but you know if they're doing a different investment approach and you just you know want to sit on your investments and, and earn a reasonable return that's important to consider as well in terms of and you know experience and stuff so there's a lot to consider when choosing a financial analyst i think you know i think canada is a, a bonus but i think we do 